Well, I bet you ain't never seen um, too many of, uh, not that one, this one before. Um, this is, these are made by Transel Corporation. Actually, it says it right down there. Uh, Transel, they make watt meters, made a few amps. I don't know if they made uh, anything else. Um, but this is a pretty rare um, Firecracker 50 uh, one tube amp that I'm doing it on today. Um, that's the uh, more popular, still hard to find though, uh, Transel Nitro 300A. I already did a video on that one. That's um, one driving four um, tubes. And um, this one today is this um, Firecracker 50. Um, I already had one here. I got the case for that, but um, I was just going to show some insides in a minute. And um, I picked this second one up at the uh, Dayton Hamvention um, from a, a, a bud. I uh, had a table and he gave me some stuff and uh, a lot of nice stuff too. He's like, here you go, tram doctor. So I was like grateful for that. And then he had this on the table. Um, no tube in it, but for ten dollars, I'm like uh, ten dollars. Tram doctor can't pass up a, a, a tube amplifier for ten bucks, even without a tube. It's like you know, I got tubes laying around, and um, I already had the one that I had going. So I'm like, I, I think I'm, you know, pretty versed with these things, and pretty versed with sweep tubes anyway. So. Um, we got it home and uh, it's like well this ought to be easy pickings it wasn't that easy because this um, first one I had you can see it um, you know everything's mounted to the um, chassis or a steel plate even though it's got that weird transformer in it I don't know if that's factory or not but that was a challenge trying to find out what did what with that um, big weird transformer there but I'm like other than that you know so fairly simple you know um, design with that so anyway we picked this one up and it's a little bit different you know even on the front as you can see this uh, firecracker 50 just had two two um, switches and two lights the um, power and the uh, transmit which is basically standby you know off and on and on this one, it's got uh, three. It's got an AMSSB um, delay for the relay on it. It looked like somebody had wrote under there, you know, in ink, in permanent marker FM. But anyway, that's just a uh, gas delay to the relay. But when we took the cover off of this one, we're going to lay the camera down and see if we can undress this thing. Hey, that was pretty easy. This um, kind of unique cover on them things just slides um, all the way off and it's two screws that hold that on there. I guess I like that. But what I didn't like is um, PC board. So I'm assuming this is the later version. You know, um, I know CB amplifiers, are not amplifiers, but CB tube radio manufacturers went from you know hardwired to point to point where somebody had to take a wire or a component and you know solder it from point A to point B a hard solder it and that's why it's called um, hardwired because somebody had to you know wire from point to point but it's a lot cheaper when manufacturers you know had an assembly line well, not even assembly line. They just went to circuit boards and um, had the um, computers just, you know, make up the circuit circuit board and um, cheaper and easier. And they farmed a lot of the work out to Mexico, you know, for mass uh, mass produce these things. And um, I don't like having a tube, even though this is just a one tuber on a um, circuit board, you know, heat and the problems and, and it's a pain in the butt to work on you know you got to take that board out to get behind it and there's quite a few you know wires and stuff as you can see so it wasn't as easy as you know I thought it would be but anyway we recapped this guy and um, the tube was flat in it so um, put in a good tube and um, 
a couple more things and after that away we went I think this is most the old parts out of that thing um, these big old caps in it um, a lot bigger than um, what used to be and this is actually a three section cap a 50 UF at 450 a 20 those were tied in parallel so actually they used the 50 and 20 together so that made it a 70 UFs at 450 volt and then even though both the caps are 4 UF at 350 that third leg it just used one of them um, for the um, low voltage the positive low voltage circuit no it didn't the screen 4 at 350 was the screen so anyway um, since it had 270s at 450 I replaced the silver caps with uh, 150 um, at 450 so I doubled the amount of UFs in it and then this one over here was that little um, 4 UF at 350 for the screen that voltage there goes over to the screen it has a little bit of um, bias generated negative bias over there by that cap and it's another diode um, eh, under there so this one is a tetrode with screen voltage and negative bias but it's not set up to be a swinging machine actually it has a very high dead key you know um, for an amp set up like a tetrode I guess I could play with it and get it to be a modulator but no I'm gonna leave this one alone um, you know factory other than you know recapping it and upgrading the caps a little bit um, so anyway I guess that's enough talking and this the old hardwired version here PCB version there just a lot cheaper for manufacturers to make a C, uh, PC board than they are the hardwired point to point so anyway hopefully everything's still all tuned up and ready to go and uh, we're gonna plug her in and let it warm up a minute same old mud duck radio as usual um, you know I got up there that Midland um, I don't even know the model number but it's got a heck of a noise blanker it's the only reason I use that mud duck radio and that and uh, you know if an amp kicks back or or bleeds into it and blow it up um, you know I won't be hurting you know where if I used a tram or a high dollar radio and um, messing around with an amp and it kicked back and blew it up I'd be uh, not happy so most of the time you know when you see me playing around with um, amps and you know working on stuff you'll see me using the mud duck radio and that's why and then too I don't like to put a whole lot of watts you know in the stuff I like to run them low um, I believe that probably nine out of ten amps that are blown up is operator error that uh, the operator or the nut behind the button did something that, that they weren't supposed to do or should have done something that they didn't do and that's why the amp blew up that's why you know you sell an amp or you know let somebody use an amp or you know somebody new get their hands on an amp it's usually not long till they blow it up for whatever reason you know overdrive it you know um, harmonic um, bad jumper is a big one people put bad jumpers in line or cheap jumpers that can't handle the power and then the jumper shorts or opens and um, you know kills the amp and they're like hey you know what's what's the matter this amp ain't doing nothing it's like well what did you do to it um, I believe that 9 out of 10 amps to go you know not counting the old amps that been sitting for 50 years to need cap jobs and all that stuff but a good amp I think 9 out of 10 that go is operator area. Anyway, I guess that's enough talking out to be good and warm. You know, I'm only doing a couple watts into this um, Firecracker 50 on a dummy load and um, 200 watt scale on a giant watt meter. No watt meter or anything on this um, Firecracker 50. And um, we're going to key down to D104. Again, 50 watt scale that's on peak actually 
Oh yeah, I usually start out on average, but since it's on peak, audio, audio. You know, Ken a little over 50, modulating to 60, and on average, um, audio, audio, going backwards on average. Like I say, uh, no modulator here, and that's only with a couple watts going in it, but that's what it do. It's one reason I like dial a watt is that um, you can dial down the dead key and you know make the amp um, do what it, it's supposed to do a little bit better with a dial a watt. You know some people don't like them, but I do. Dial a watt's great for uh, tuning in and driving amps correctly. But anyway, that's all this Firecracker 50 do. No input tuning, but it as you can see on that digital watt meter, if you can see it. Uh, camera's plugged in let me see if I can reach it over there my battery about dead on the camera I had to plug it in but a 1.8 input SWR audio audio backwards modulation <laughs> anyway that's gonna be it for this uh, Transel firecracker 50 one tube um, amplifier PC B board version. Same makers who make the Nitro 300A and um, they also made, I think it was the 600, Nitro 600. Those are really rare and hard to find. Um, and people want a lot of money for them. I don't even know what's in them. I never had a 600. I'd like to get my hands on one just for the collection. But anyway, that's it for the Firecracker 50 today. Bye.